It's Sunday, September 11th, and after hours and hours of tweaking AMD settings to get my games running smoothly, I really felt it would be a total waste if I didn't make a video to help others get over some of these uh, troubles and hiccups and, oh my God, so many different tweaks that you got to do to get things right. So the first thing is, is um, I did this because I recently got an, a, I got a FreeSync monitor. Um, I've got the uh, Acer... Uh, what is it, XR342 uh, CK, which is the successor to the 341, which is, it's a really nice ultra-wide monitor. It's great. Um, it looks great. It seems to act great. But I came from another ultra-wide monitor that didn't really, you know, it didn't have FreeSync, and it ran great on VSync. But here we are. Well, why the heck does it, what really matters here? Is there really a benefit behind this? Well, believe it or not, there is. Um, but it's not for all games in all situations. This is not the, hey, let's put free sync on everything and, and everybody's going to be a lot happier about everything. I actually had a lot of trouble and I want to walk through some of uh, the details here uh, with some of the games that I've um, tweaked. So here I've got Radeon settings and I'm going to you know, open up um, the games here and show you the different games that I have. Now, uh, with these games, basically, so uh, I'll, the ones that I've actually played with and tweaked are Chivalry. Um, I did not actually do Crisis. I did Crisis Warhead. Um, I did Doom. Uh, I did Killing Floor. And I also did, um, I did Vermintide. And I did The Witcher 3. Now, each individual game has, this is where it gets so frustrating, is each game has completely unique settings. And I mean unique in the sense of what I'm gonna share with you is not just um, the settings for uh, Radeon settings, but also you need to also have, I'm also using RTSS in some cases, or a Riva Tuner Statistics Server, which is bundled with a, um, a Afterburner, right, with MSI Afterburner. So what I'm gonna show you guys is, let's go through some of the key ones. Um, a more modern game, right? We would let's talk about The Witcher. So with The Witcher, uh, it took me forever to get anything to be reasonable. Now here's the key. Here's the key thing. I have a Crossfire setup, so that's another parameter here. You can disable Crossfire and run on one card for a lot of these games, including The Witcher. I could disable it, but The Witcher does gain some benefit from uh, having multiple cards, and so I've seen. In fact, it's it's actually pretty significant, so I can't really turn it off. But at the same time, uh, it complicates things, and some of the frame pacing and all that stuff for some of these games uh, isn't perfect when you have that feature on. What I found for my monitor, which is a 75 hertz variable refresh rate monitor, is that I had to drop the frame rate target control down to 65 FPS, and then just for safety, I actually have the uh, RTSS at for specifically for The Witcher at 70. And this is just the tweaks that I ran. Now I can bring up a couple articles that I ran into where someone is on AMD forums is talking about, you know, how to set these settings and which ones matter and which ones don't, uh, or how they affect each other. But in my experiments and tests, generally speaking, um, you know, it's actually just very unique to the game. And in this particular case, um, I've set the FRTC to 65 FPS, and I set uh, the RTSS frame limit to 70. Now, what does this do, and why am I getting good results with that? Well, I'm not actually getting perfect results. There's no, not absolutely perfect, because again, I'm running Crossfire. But I'm getting a really, really, really good stable frames at around 65 fps the frame rate target control as i understand it and if anybody else wants to chime in and correct me please do because i'm pretty sure after reading everything and watching all these videos and again i want to give a shout out to uh m or uh, tv for doing his video uh about the um about free sync which really helped me a lot um, but still there's kind of incomplete information out there at least it seems so, or at least there's a lot of confusion. It just seemed that when I put it at uh, 65 FPS, 
here, this made the most significant difference at reducing tearing for this specific game. Um, there was tearing, even if I put it at 70, I would see tearing in certain cases, and it was really frustrating me. And some of these tears that we see are very weird, and they just don't seem, there's ones like, uh, I'm going to get into uh, how I uh, actually, what I did with Doom, for example, in a sec. So again, Witcher 3, 65 FPS, or essentially 10 FPS less than the rated monitor's uh, refresh rate in order to keep it below the maximum, that way preventing it from uh, overriding successive frames and uh, you know um, and and trampling them, right? So let's move on to a different game. Sorry if that was a bit long-winded. Uh, let's go on to I think one of the more important ones that is very interesting and unique is Doom. Now here's another thing. Real quick tip: take note. I've seen on forums, and I, this actually I'm pretty sure happened to me in some of these cases, if you're having trouble getting these settings to work, you delete the profile and then re-add it manually and you'll get better results. Uh, or at least it seems like, it, oh, now it all of a sudden it works. Now I can't absolutely verify it, but it felt like that for at least two of the games. I was like, it wasn't working before, and then all of a sudden it did. Uh, and, and again, maybe I'm just not tuning into maybe in this case like for example doom it might have been pointing to a different a bad location or or something like that so what we've got here is uh with doom a very unique case this so let me say this if you're using vulcan and you have a single card it's probably going to work perfect and don't even mess with it uh it seemed you know like vulcan's performance is incredible on uh you know these cards and, you know, I'm extremely happy with it when I saw it. But that said, what happened was, is I actually, after playing around, and I couldn't get the Vulcan to work perfect. That was the problem. No matter what the settings were, I would see some weird tearing, even with V-Sync on in Vulcan for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I have two cards and it doesn't recognize them. I don't know. But I would see weird lines kind of at the bottom of the screen, you know? And I don't know why, it was just really strange. So what I ended up doing was after toying around and I was about to give up, I actually uh, used, I went to OpenGL and in my case specifically, this won't be for everybody else, because I have Crossfire, all of a sudden, which I read that this didn't work actually, all of a sudden it was leveraging Crossfire. I was getting extremely good frames and I can, instead of actually, this is where it gets really interesting, instead of adding the FPS, uh, instead of adding V-Sync on, I can actually, I was actually using, I am actually using uh, the RTSS frame limiter, and I turned off the frame rate target control and all that stuff. It just, it was just seemed useless. What I ended up doing was, as I peeled back the frames from 75 to 74 to 73, all, it, it went from having more tearing in some weird kind of you know horizontal lines going off the screen, but typically kind of at the bottom, you know, or maybe at the top. It was really weird. And then when I hit 72, they vanished. So uh, I'm not showing it here. Uh, maybe I can bring it up. Hold on. Let me uh, see if I go to my uh, RTSS settings here, and I'll add that to the... Um, display is a window capture here and standby and there we go uh, let's see here uh, okay and so here we have my uh, my statistics server now if I go and uh, grab that and go look down here at where are we doom I think is uh, is on this list let's see here where are we Yep, there it is, Doom 64. You'll see that I set the settings to 72. This was a huge, uh, this, this was it, this was the clincher. It literally looks mind-bendingly good. It's extremely good. I probably haven't seen a game run that well once I, I got those settings set up right. In all the other cases, it looked great, but it didn't look perfect, and it was definitely frustrating it, the, the little jitters or the tearing across the bottom of the screen or whatever, it just broke immersion and it was very frustrating. Now, for me personally, I also found that setting or adjusting the 
motion blur, and this is going to be unique to everybody else, individuals, actually helped very, uh, a lot at getting things just right for how it felt. So in this case, Doom 64. Um, let's go ahead and just, because these are the unique ones, let's look at The Witcher 3. Witcher 3, 70. I don't know why, because I'm doing that in combination with the uh, frame rate target control, but that's what worked for me. You can maybe try, I think everybody's machine is gonna be different in this case too, and what they can, how they can perform. And if you have crossfire or not, it's gonna have an effect as well. So uh, let's get back to business here. Let's walk through just a couple more games and wrap this up so you guys get an idea. Now in the case of, I'm a big fan of Crisis Warhead, you know, because I think it's out of the Crisis series, it's probably the best one, in my opinion. Um, and it's worth kind of showing people uh, how a good RTS is made and how it looks. So I like to show this one off sometimes. Um, but, you know, the only thing I really had to do here really was uh, keeping the frame rate target control off, uh, keeping a fixed frame rate uh, default, which is if we go back to... Um, here, let me... Um, give me one second here. Let me move this down. Uh, if we look at the frame rate target control, where are we here? Just one second. Um, right, so this is off, but if we look at my default, okay, stand by. You'll see that I have just the default of 75. And the reason why I put it at 75 on RTSS is because for the majority of games, and Crisis is one of these games, they're older and you typically will run them with vsync on now what i found about with the crisis game which kind of sucks is i probably should i need to probably set this one to uniquely to 60 fps because with vsync on in game which is the only way to get this particular game to work it you pretty much have to have it off you, you, I mean, you pretty much have to have it at 60 because the game doesn't really, even though you can tweak it and play with it, it'll get it to run at 75. You'll get some weird tearing or some artifacting that, not artifacting, but like some weird um, layering of frames that happens because the game is trying to render at one setting, but you're trying to force it to run on VSync, et cetera, et cetera. So there's some other tweaks there that could be made to optimize this. But again, this is one of these weird ones. Got to have Crossfire off, that kind of thing. So let's see, next up, let's go back to, uh, let, me, let me go ahead and close this out for you guys. Uh, and then we're gonna go here. What else did I do? So Killing Floor, okay, Killing Floor, another one. Wow, that, was, that one was weird. So Killing Floor is very interesting because it has in game its own setting for variable refresh rate. What did that actually do? I never could figure it out. It always felt like in my older system, it would just make it run crappy. So by turning that setting on, what you got was a high, uh, it, it unlocked the frame rate uh, from 60 to go all the way to 75. Now in that particular game, uh, I actually added, I think, a specific um, setting here. If we look at Killing Floor, where I think there's a Killing Floor setting in here somewhere. Oh, where are you, K? I'm not good at spelling anymore. Um, H I J K. Is it? No, maybe not. Interesting. Oh no, that's right. I didn't change anything. All I did, and that's the unique thing about Killing Floor. And if you watch some of the de the, the demo, uh, the windmill demo that AMD does, this is where that gets interesting. Uh, VSync can be used in combination with FreeSync. It's not, they're not mutually exclusive, uh, which is, but most games don't do that, right? And, it, and it, most of the time, if you turn VSync on, it's pretty much stuck on. Um, but what I found was by, with Killing Floor, I didn't need uh, RTSS at all. And basically uh, it would, it would run perfect, you know, at the maxed out default that I have of 75 frames, but then VSync on and the uh, variable fresh rate on. Looks great, looks amazing, best I've ever played the game, awesome. Okay, next up, we've got, what else did I do? I, uh, natural selection, I toyed with that as well. That one was really interesting. Again, very unique situation, no max frame, uh, 
uh, no RTSS setting, or at least uniquely. Um, but if I put the frame rate target control at 75 FPS, I would get weird art like tearing style artifacts going across the screen. But all I had to do was drop this one by one frame. Now, I don't know what that means. Does that mean that Natural Selection 2 has an extremely good engine that's optimized, that you don't have to worry about that? Um, that would, but maybe that's it. I don't know. But that's really, really cool. It, it just one frame down, and wow, it just looks amazing and fluid. And so, yes, definitely love that. Um, with By the way, that is with uh, V-Sync uh, off in that case. I just left it off, and I'm getting perfectly smooth frames. Um, and that's all for now. I did do Chivalry. Uh, Chivalry did not seem to lend it well. This is another example of a game that did not lend it well, itself well to FreeSync at all. Basically, you just got to leave it on. Uh, <laughs> you basically just got to leave it on VSync and be happy, uh, and then that's it. And it works as is because it can run that well. Uh, also, oh, another little quick note about. Chivalry, though, if you are a Chivalry player and you are having trouble getting get going over uh, 60 frames per second, or actually 62 is the default in their settings, you have to upgrade their maximum settings to um, to a higher number, and then everything will, will, will work out great. And I think there's even some tricks there that you could try playing around with uh, FreeSync to get it to just live in a happy zone. Uh, personally, I think I just put it on VSync and, and, and everything works fine. Uh, and from there, so, or maybe it was, I don't even remember. It just seems so, I spent way too much time on that. So is there anything else I can think of? I think, uh, Vermintide, what did I do anything? Left it off. I think Vermintide just needed VSync. I think it's another one of those weird ones. I'll have to look at that one again. Um, but here's, here's the breakdown guys. And I'm sorry if this took a really long time to get here. The bottom line is each game is unique. And I, when I mean unique, it's like creepily unique because every game's engineered differently, has different settings, has different experience. So in this particular case, every one of these games I've tried, I've had to tweak specifically to get perfect, to get so there's no tears and there's fluid frames. And yet, and the ultimate thing here, if we go back uh, and look at this is, it actually does work. <clears throat> it works, but it isn't the magic panacea of it's going to fix everything. It just does really well for specific scenarios and specific cases. So if you're thinking about getting a FreeSync monitor and you have an AMD uh, graphics card, yeah, uh, go for it. <laughs> uh, I think it's a great idea, but keep in mind you're probably going to spend some time tweaking for your favorite games. I hope that helps everybody. Please give a like to the video if that helps you.